hey, over here. No, 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 over here. I know you can't see me, but there's more to this than meets the eye. So just a few words on how to experience the virtual tour ahead. If you see everything looks kind of stretched out in a weird way, switch over to Google's Chrome browser. It automatically reconfigures the content as 360 degree video. That's right, you can look at things above, below, behind, and of course, in front of you. As long as you're using Chrome, you can tap or click and drag to look around the new lab at the University of Alberta. Now your guides will be my name is Troy Locke, and I am one of the research technicians within the Molecular Biology Service Unit. My name is Chandra McAllister, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow in Dr. Janice Cook's lab at the University of Alberta. One other thing before we begin the tour. If you're watching on a phone or a tablet, you can also pan around by simply moving your mobile device. Go ahead. Woo! <laughs> kind of neat, eh? Let's begin the tour. I think one of the coolest things about this instrumentation is it has, it's a very small box that is kind of nondescript, but the amount of data that it absolutely can collect is, is absolutely huge. So these are next generation sequencers and they can produce up to, on our biggest machine here, up to 400 million reads. The amount of information that you can get from just a single push of this machine is absolutely huge. Basically, this machine allows us to look and find out how much we don't know about what we're looking at. So before, we would use microarrays or we'd use other things where we already had implemented and knew about what we were looking for. And that was the limitation in what we were finding. Now, we can look at the whole genome. We can look at the whole transcriptome and realize how much information and how much of the genome and the transcriptome we don't know about. And that's fascinating. We're looking at a Sanger sequencer, so in the case of just general microbiology, this is used by lots of different people in terms of cloning, uh, genome walking, looking at very specific pieces of DNA and being able to manipulate and use those, but making sure that the sequence that you're looking at is the sequence you think it is. Why do we go gee whiz when we look at this? Well, when we go gee whiz on it is the, the throughput is a lot smaller, but the data quality which comes out is extremely high. So location number one when we're looking at things is we're dealing with millions of reads at a particular time, but those reads may or may not be necessarily correct because they're happening so quickly. With this machine into here, we're only looking at 96 samples at a time, and instead of millions of reads, we're dealing with bases up to 750, but they are extremely accurate. Why does this make your life better? Say I do location number one, and I find a region of DNA that is really interesting to me that I think is impacting the phenotype that I'm seeing. Well, then I go over to the Sanger sequencer, and I'm now able to clone this gene or this DNA and look at it in terms of how it is functioning in different species or um, how the gene has been changed evolutionarily. So I can look at the exact sequence of that gene versus just getting a whole bunch of information. So these guys over here are the workhorse of um, gene expression analysis. When you want to look at what is different between a normal cell versus a cancer cell, or you want to look at what makes a, a lung cell a lung cell and not a stomach cell, how do we do that? These are the tools that you get to get in and you actually look at the expression differences within a cell. I mean, we have general PCR. A polymerase chain reaction. So basically we are amplifying a specific region of DNA and saying is it there, is it not there. That's general PCR. When we go to quantitative PCR it allows us to say is there more or less. So if we're looking at a certain fungus and we're looking at a tree, is there a lot of that fungus there? Is there a little bit of fungus there? What kind of fungus is it? Is there a close relative associated with it? And the qPCR machine allows us to do all of that because it's quantitative. 
in terms of that, the more that we can understand a system and when we can see what the changes are, that definitely allows us to move into the next thing of how do we treat it. If we can understand all the different pieces of that puzzle, once we understand the puzzle, then we can go ahead and you can manipulate that puzzle. That's where these tools really kind of play um, an integral part in, in the science behind you know, treating pine beetle or treating the fungus which is involved in it. Is, Right now we're not sure what the key factor is and so the more and more we understand it, the closer that we'll get to that. With all technology, there becomes a limitation and that's humans. We move into robotics platforms to increase our throughput. Robots can do things for longer periods of time without fatiguing. Um, as well, robotics are a really, really fun tool to be able to do. But there's always a trade-off because sometimes you're, you increase your, your research cost when you move into a robotics platform. And so if you have a small experiment, robotics isn't the right way to go. Is you can complete that experiment. But once you start getting into larger, larger data sets or more things that you want to set up, robotics are definitely the way to be able to go because it then allows you, the researcher, to be able to turn around and do other things while the robot is actually doing the hard work. The MBSU, or the Molecular Biology Service Unit, is fabulous. The people are there to help you, and it's crazy how it actually does bring labs together. There are very few facilities like, around the world that have this kind of interdisciplinary science, researchers working together, collaborating. We have experts that are associated with the technologies that we want to use right on campus available to us. So we can pick their brains, we can ask them questions, they can teach us how to use the different technologies, and it's, it's great.